In this video, we're going to classify some chemical reactions into a small number of different types. We can't classify every reaction using these types, but they are a few simple but common examples that will help you get your head around uh, different kinds of reactions. So let's start with the two simplest reactions, putting stuff together and taking it apart. An example of putting stuff together would be the reaction between zinc and sulphur. You mix zinc powder and sulphur powder together, you heat it to get the reaction going, and it then transforms into the ionic compound zinc sulfide. This kind of reaction where you combine two reactants into one product is called a combination. The opposite to a combination reaction is a decomposition reaction. In this type of reaction you take a single compound and you make it decompose to give two or sometimes more products. An example of one of these types of reaction is the decomposition of water. This is done by passing electricity through water. The bonds holding the water molecules together are broken and the atoms rearrange to give pure hydrogen, H2 remember, and oxygen, which is O2. The next type of reaction you might encounter is called a displacement or sometimes a replacement reaction. And there are two kinds, single and double displacements. These types of reactions involve ionic compounds and the key feature is that ions or atoms will swap places with each other in the compounds. Let me show you what I mean. Let's first look at single displacement reactions. In this reaction, one element is displaced from a compound by another one. You can see I've represented this by the green circle here kicks out the blue circle from this compound and takes its place. A commonly demonstrated example of this kind of reaction is that between zinc and copper sulfate. This picture from the science photo library shows this reaction happening. Copper sulfate is blue and soluble in water, so the blue coloured solution near the top of the test tube is copper sulfate dissolved in water. The shiny metal sticking out of the copper sulfate solution is zinc metal, and these are our two reactants, zinc and copper sulfate. You can see that where the zinc has come into contact with the copper sulfate, its surface has become covered with a reddish gunk. This stuff is actually tiny copper crystals. At the bottom of the test tube, you can see that the solution has lost its colour. The blue copper sulfate has been transformed into colourless zinc sulfate, while the copper ions that used to be part of the copper sulfate have now been precipitated out as pure copper metal. And those are our two products, the pure copper and the zinc sulfate, which is now dissolved in solution. The other kind of displacement is a double displacement. In this reaction, two ionic compounds, usually both dissolved in water, but not necessarily, swap ions to produce two new compounds. If one of these new compounds is insoluble in water, it'll precipitate out as a solid. An example of this reaction is the reaction of sulfate salts with barium nitrate. Barium nitrate is soluble in water, but barium sulfate is not. It's a white powder. So if barium nitrate is mixed with any other sulfate salt, then the barium and the sulfate get together and form a white precipitate. And this can be used as a test for sulfates. The reaction that I've written out here is with, of sodium sulfate with the barium nitrate. The photo shows the reaction happening in a test tube. The sodium sulfate and the barium nitrate are both dissolved in water, and because they're colourless, the solutions look exactly like water. However, when one is added to the other, the ions swap and barium sulfate forms as an insoluble white precipitate. Sodium nitrate is the other product. When it's in its pure solid form, it's also a white powder, but because it is soluble in water, you don't actually see it form here. Here's a quick task for you. Using what you know about separations, work out a way that you could recover the two products of this reaction, barium sulfate and sodium nitrate, in their pure solid form. The last kind of reaction we'll look at for now is the combustion reaction. This classification refers to any reaction where some kind of fuel combines with oxygen and burns to release energy. One of the products of the reaction, sometimes the only product, will be an oxide of the original fuel. The simplest and most obvious example of combustion, in fact the combustion reaction on which the modern industrial age is built, is that of carbon. Carbon, which could be in the form of coal or charcoal, burns in oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide and releases a lot of energy. Another example is a carbon containing fuel such as ethanol. Ethanol molecules, I should say ethanol is uh, what you would more commonly know, know as alcohol, 
Uh, ethanol molecules are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And when they burn in extra oxygen gas, we produce carbon dioxide from the carbon, as well as water from the leftover hydrogen and oxygen in the ethanol. This reaction is used in camping stoves, uh, alcohol camping stoves, and now some car engines as well, since they've start to, started to blend petrol with ethanol. But the fuel could also be a metal. When iron combines with oxygen, it also produces an oxide, iron oxide, and it releases energy. Often this reaction happens really slowly and you don't think of it being a combustion, since this is the reaction by which iron rusts. Iron oxide is rust. But you can see it's a combustion if you speed up the reaction by heating the iron. This picture shows two combustion reactions happening simultaneously. One is the iron particles burning in air and sparkling with heat and light as they do so. Iron powder is sometimes used in fireworks to produce this sparkly effect. The other combustion reaction that's going on in this photograph is what's powering the Bunsen burner, the combustion of gas, probably a mixture of methane and other similar carbon-based molecules. They are also combusting to produce carbon dioxide and water. OK, your task for this video is to look at each of these reactions and using what you know, classify each one. Note that there may be one or two reactions in there that can be classified as more than one kind of reaction. This would also be a good chance to practice your naming and formulae skills. See if you can write the formulae for each of the compounds and elements in this task.